Assalamu alaikum. Today in linear circuit analysis course, we have to perform lab number 9. The title of lab number 9 is such that to investigate the application of superposition theorem to multiple DC voltage source circuits means that in this lab we have to investigate the application of superposition theorem means that how we can apply the superposition theorem to a DC circuit having more than one voltage sources. To perform this lab we are in need of two variable power supplies, two digital multimeters. Instead of multimeters we can use ammeter or voltmeter. Different value resistances. In our case we are considering 220 ohm 330 ohm and 1 kilo ohm resistors, a breadboard and obviously connecting wires for the connection of these components. What is superposition theorem? The superposition theorem is actually a method which determine currents in a circuit having multiple sources. By leaving one source at a time in the circuit, and replacing the other sources by their internal resistances means that a circuit with more than one voltage sources so one source will be at a time considered in a circuit while the other source will be replaced by its internal resistance remember that for an ideal voltage source the internal resistance is equal to zero so we will replace a voltage source on a short circuit while for an ideal current the internal resistance is infinite so we have replaced it with a open total current in any branch of such circuit which can be represented by ix is the algebraic sum of the total individual currents in that branch means that in any branch of the circuit there will be two type of a currents one because of a voltage source one and one because of a voltage source two sum of these two individual currents is equal to the total current flowing in that branch in four easy steps we can apply the superposition theorem to any circuit step one leave one voltage source in the circuit and replace every other voltage source with its internal resistance as discussed earlier that we have to leave one voltage source in the circuit while other voltage sources will be replaced by their internal resistances for ideal sources a short representing zero internal resistance for voltage source while an open representing infinite internal resistance will be replaced for the current source. Now in step number two, we have to determine the current in a similar fashion where there is only one source in the circuit. As in previous labs, we have discussed the series and parallel circuits, um, current and voltage divider rule. So using the Kirchhoff current law and current divider rules, we have to determine the current in each branch using these methods in step number three we have to repeat the step number one and step number two for other voltage sources in step number four now to find the actual current in a given branch algebraically sum the currents due to each individual source means that the total current flowing in that branch will be equal to the algebraically sum of the individual currents flowing in that branch due to different voltage sources. Once you find the current, you can determine the voltage using Ohm's law. The circuit we have considered for this lab is such that it comprises three resistances and two voltage sources resistances are r1 r2 and r3 so the value of resistances are such that r1 is equal to 220 ohm r2 is representing 330 ohm while r3 is equal to 1 kilo ohm we have considered two voltage sources with the name of vs1 and vs2 and the value of 
these voltage sources are 5 volt and 6 volt respectively looking from vs1 so when we when we replace vs2 by a short circuit we will have only one voltage source vs1 in this circuit so looking from vs1 the r total will be equal to r1 is in series with the parallel combination of r2 and r3 further using ohms law we can find out the i total by dividing the total voltage source vs1 over the total resistance similarly from looking from vs2 now if we replace the vs1 by a short circuit leaving vs2 in the circuit and looking from that voltage source vs2 we can find the total resistance such that r3 is in series with a parallel combination of r1 and r2 and similarly to find the total current due to that voltage source 2 we have to divide the source voltage 2 over the total resistance the procedure for performing this lab is such that first of all we have to calculate the theoretical results or theoretical values so we have to consider a circuit with two different voltage sources as you have seen in previous slide now to find the voltage from node a to ground which must be equal to v2 we can use the superposition theorem first we have to consider the source voltage vs1 assuming that vs2 is replaced with its ideal internal resistance means a shard now we have to determine the voltage at node a using standard series parallel techniques like Kirchhoff voltage law and voltage divider rule etc and we will record these values in table 1 then we have to repeat the process using vs2 while shorting the vs1 now finally we have to sum these two voltages and record these values in table 1 for experimental results or values we have to verify the superposition theorem so first of all we have to build the circuit as per schematic diagram now considering the vs1 we have to replace vs2 with a short means a connecting wires will be used to short r3 with r2 resistance now determine the voltage at node a we have to find v2 r v a by inserting a dmm in parallel with r2 resistance and we will note these values in table 1 after calculating the v2 values now we have to remove the shorting wire and we will insert vs2 while replacing vs1 with a short now the same the same process will be repeated for vs2 and we have we will determine the voltage at node a with respect to ground and put these values in table number one in step three removing the shorting wire and reinsert sources vs1 means that both sources should now be in the circuit vs1 as well as vs2 we will measure the voltage at node a again and we will put these values in table number one along with deviations table number one is representing the voltage values or results in that particular in that given circuit here you can see that in column number one we have our sources vs1 vs2 and the combined effect of both sources vs1 and vs2 in in next column we have to put all the theoretical values determined for VA due to VS1, VS2 and their combined values. Similarly, in third column, we have to put the voltage values VA due to VS1, VS2 and their combined which are measured through TMM. And finally, we will determine the deviation between the theoretical and measured values. Similarly, table number 2 is representing the measurement of the current in our considered circuit. Again here we have a sources, two different sources Vs1, Vs2 and their combined values Vs1 plus Vs2. 
first of all we will find the theoretical value of the current flowing through r2 due to vs1 current flowing through r2 due to vs2 and current flowing through r2 due to both voltage sources after that in column 3 we will put the current flowing through r2 resistance which are measured using dmm and finally we will determine the deviation between the theoretic and and measured currents demonstration of the experiment
first of all we have to implement our circuit as per schematic diagram so you can see that and uh, this is 220 ohm resistor uh, which is connected uh, in series with r2 resistor r2 is a 330 ohm resistor we have another resistor uh, of a 1 kilo ohm which is represented by R3 one terminal of R3 is connected with R2 while the other terminal will be connected with the VS2 so we have two power supply over here uh, first of all we have to check the values of these power supplies that whether they are providing as the uh, considered value or not so on setting our multimeter to a voltage range first of all we check the a fixed power supply of the digital trainer and here we can see that it is providing 5.03 volt which is approximately equal to 5 volt similarly the second power supply is the variable power supply and we have to set this on a 6 volt at present this uh, supply is providing us this digital power supply is providing us 5.4 so we have to adjust the 6 volt now you can see that this is approximately equal to closer to 6 volt 6.05 volt approximately now we have to connect our power supplies with our circuit so first of all we have to connect the vs1 for vs1 we are we are using the red one color the positive terminal of the battery will be connected with r1 Similarly, the R2 will be connected with the ground of the first power supply VS1. So here we have used a yellow color for the ground. Similarly, we have to connect another power supply, the VS2. The positive terminal of the VS2 will be connected with the R3. So in these five slots, uh, anywhere we can insert our power supply. For example, we are inserting it over here we have connected our positive terminal with r3 and the ground will be connected with the r2 of that power supply again a yellow wire is used to connect the ground of the battery so we here we have connected the both power supply so first of all we have to check the voltage at point a remember that point a is the meeting point of r1 and r2 so here we have to check the voltage drop across R2 and we will note it in our table. Here you can see that we are getting 3.36 volt <clears throat> when both sources VS1 and VS2 are plugged in. So we are having 3.36 volt. Now we will disconnect one of our voltage source like uh, we will leave VS1 in our circuit uh, while replacing the vs1 with a short so short circuit will be like that we have to remove the second power supply and we just leave the first vs1 in the circuit now we will check the voltage across the r2 insert the dmm across that resistor here you can see that we are having 2.66 volt because of a s1 now in similar fashion we have to remove the first power supply and we will leave the second power supply vs2 in the circuit so for that purpose we have to short the vs1 with the circuit like that and we will reconnect the vs2 with the power supply where we are providing 6 volt to the circuit the ground terminal will be connected as previously and now we will check the voltage across the r2 the r2 resistor and here we find that it is approximately equal to 0.673 now we will find the current in the similar fashion as we have discussed in previous uh, labs you have to remove the one terminal of the r2 from the circuit and then you will insert a emitter in series with the r2 uh, such that the, the red probe of the 
multimeter or DMM will be attached with the R2 while the negative terminal will be connected with the ground. So you have to determine yourself the current flowing through R2 because of a voltage source 1, voltage source 2 and after uh, uh, inserting both power supplies means that uh, because of VS1 and VS2 both.